Here are three altcoins which I believe are sleeping giants. And even though nothing I say is financial advice nor a guarantee, the first altcoin I want to talk about is ICP. Because I think ICP could hypothetically go to the price of $500 during this bull run. And the reason for that is because I think that the internet computer is something very special. You got to think about this, right? It's currently the world's most productive blockchain. And I'm not joking. The internet computer is currently facilitating upwards of half a billion transactions per day, while at the same time maintaining reduced energy consumption and cost, which again means that it's the world's most productive blockchain. I mean, just let that sink in. That's insane, in my opinion. Also, the internet computer, it's focused on AI, and not just your stereotypical AI. It's focused on decentralized AI, which I think is so fantastic because decentralization, it typically brings a lot of benefits, such as, for instance, usually improved security and as well as improved scalability too. So when it comes to the internet computer, they're that special. When it comes to the AI market overall, even though some of the hype did die down as of late, according to Grandview Research, the AI market is predicted to be worth nearly $2 trillion by 2030. I mean, that's crazy. So yes, even though some of the hype isn't really there anymore, I think better days are still ahead. And I think that, man, when it comes to the internet computer, they're priming themselves for such a fantastic position moving forward. Because guess what happens when the hype for AI finally comes back in again? Something like the internet computer, it's going to be waiting there in the wings. So then it's going to catch the wave. That's so fantastic, in my opinion. Now, let's not forget as well, the internet computer, it's just a lot better than something like Ethereum. At least that's the way I view it. Because for instance, the average cost per instruction on the internet computer is over 40 million times less expensive than Ethereum. I mean, that's crazy. Also, on top of that, if that's not even a crazy enough statistic, for $1 worth of smart contract data, you can get only around 44 bytes on Ethereum. But on the other hand, you can get over 200 million bytes on the internet computer. I mean, this is insane stuff right here. When it comes to this project, man, I just am very excited. But it still doesn't end there because there's more. The internet computer, right, is trying to achieve something so amazing because it's trying to decentralize the internet. It's attempting to create a decentralized version of the internet that is spread throughout thousands of computers around the world. And as we all know, the internet as of right now, arguably, according to many people, is typically controlled by big tech giants. However, through decentralization, a lot of the drawbacks that we see with the internet right now, it's pretty much gone. There's going to be potentially a lot more freedom as well. So I think this right here is such a no-brainer pick for me. And ICP at the price of $500 wouldn't surprise me because not only does it have the fundamentals to allow for that to happen, in my opinion, but the market cap at that point, considering its current circulating supply, isn't insane. Because Again, if it were to go to the price of $500, considering its current circulating supply, at that point, market cap would be around $230 billion. Now, this isn't insane because, yes, it's a market cap of over $200 billion. I get that. But at one point, Ethereum did reach over $550 billion in market cap. So this is over $300 billion less than that. And I think that the internet computer is just much better than Ethereum. So if Ethereum can go to over half a trillion dollars in market cap, why can't something like ICP at least go to around, you know, 230 billion? Don't think it's crazy at all. At least that's the way I take a look at it. And now the second altcoin I want to talk about is VET. And now VET is the primary native token of the VeChain platform. And I think this right here is so special because I think VET could hypothetically go to the price of a dollar during this bull run. Let me explain why. You know, first of all, I think it should be noted how when it comes to the VeChain platform, it does contain two distinct tokens. The first being, of course, VET which is used to transfer value across the network. And the second is, of course, something called VTHO, which stands for VeChain Thor Energy. And yeah, I'm saying Thor, like the Avengers movie. But besides that point, when it comes to VTHO, it is used for gas fees. And keep in mind, both VET and VTHO, they are used on the VeChain Thor blockchain. And before I get into just how special the VeChain Thor blockchain is, I want to explain how I'm a lot more bullish on VET when compared to VTHO, which is why I'm talking about VET in this video. But besides that point, when I take a look at the VeChain Thor blockchain, the way I take a look at it is that as if it's the Toyota blockchains. You know, that's how I would put an analogy on the VeChain Thor blockchain because ever since 2018, it has had a total of zero network outages. And I'm not kidding, by the way, that's how impressive it is. It's very reliable, which is again why I call it the Toyota blockchains. Now, before anyone thinks that, you know, hey man, isn't all blockchains not supposed to have any network outages? 
you know, this isn't even anything special. Now, here's the thing, you know, actually at one point Solana, which is a very amazing blockchain, by the way, you know, again, at one point it did experience eight different network outages in just a time span of a year, which I think is completely unacceptable. Now, granted, Solana did improve ever since then. That's very amazing. But in reality, it did happen. So I think that when it comes to reliability, it's often overlooked. But when it comes to VeChain Thor, man, it has that box ticked. And the tick is very massive because it's that reliable. At least that's the way I take a look at it. And let's not forget, when it comes to VeChain, they're primarily focused on supply chain management. And this market does have a lot of potential because, for instance, according to Polaris Market Research, the supply chain management market size is predicted to be worth over $58 billion by 2030. This is crazy right here. However, if that's not even enough for you, we take into consideration VeChain's partnerships, which is just out of this world, by the way. Because, for instance, we take a look at partners such as PricewaterhouseCoopers, aka PwC. That's one of the big four accounting firms. That's amazing. You take a look at Deloitte, also another big four accounting firm. That's crazy. Also, you take a look at Walmart China, BMW, H&M, LVMH, Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. That's what it stands for. But besides that point, you also take a look at even the government of Cyprus as well. I mean, man, when it comes to VeChain, it's very impressive. So VET, at the price of a dollar, it really isn't insane. You know, if it were to go to the price of a dollar, considering its current circulating supply, at that point, market cap would be around $80 billion. Now, you got to think about this, right? Something like BNB at one point reached over $100 billion in market cap. And do I think that BNB is a lot better than VET? I don't think so. Because, for instance, according to Crypto.com research, just last year, slightly over 2% of the crypto hacks that happened actually occurred on the BNB smart chain ecosystem. That's completely unacceptable. Now, at first glance, slightly over 2% may not seem that terrible, but when you consider just how massive the crypto space is overall, I think this is very unacceptable at the end of the day. So if something like BNB can go to over $100 billion in market cap, why can't VET at least go to around $80 billion? Also take into consideration, something like Doge even at one point reached over $80 billion in market cap. So again, I don't think it's crazy. In the past, we've seen projects that are far less, in my opinion, reach far higher. So Again, around $80 billion market cap vet at the price of a dollar. Wouldn't surprise me at all. And now the third project I want to talk about is, of course, Quant. Because how can we forget this? This is amazing. I think Quant could hypothetically go to the price of $5,000 during this bull run. Now, why is that? It's because I believe that the Quant network is that special. Take this into consideration. The Quant network, it's made up of two things. The Overledger OS and the Overledger network. And the special thing about the Overledger OS is that it allows something called a multi-chain application to be built. Now, what is this? Some people, they may be wondering. This is an application that sits on top of multiple blockchains instead of just one. This is very impressive because traditionally, people, they have to be stuck building on only just one blockchain. Let's say an enterprise, they want to build an application and they have to be stuck on only one blockchain. That's kind of caca because that blockchain, it may not have you know all the advantages that that enterprise, for instance, is looking for. So what is the solution? A multi-chain application. So for instance, right, through the Overledger OS, I can, let's say, you know, if I'm an enterprise, for instance, build an application that takes advantage of the speed of the Stellar blockchain, while at the same time, let's say also taking advantage of the security of the Bitcoin blockchain. That's how amazing it is. No longer do people have to be stuck building on only just one blockchain. This is very insane. And in a good way, of course, very revolutionary in my opinion. Now, the second thing that makes up the Quant network is something called the Overledger network, and this is made up of the Overledger OS users. And these Overledger OS users on the network can share their resources, their data, their apps, and of course, monetize them. That's how amazing the Quant network is. So any way I view it, I think that it's arguably one of the best out there. Now, let's not forget as well, Quant has amazing use cases. For instance, you take a look at how it has use cases for Enterprise licenses, developer licenses, gateways and staking, application users, transaction processing, identity and account, you know, the list, it feels like it goes on and on and on. That's how amazing Quant is. It's not short of any use cases. I think you get my point. But even despite that, the cherry on top for me is the fact that Quant, it's very rare. And this is not a joke, by the way, because Quant total supply is around 14.8 million. However, on the flip side, you take a look at Bitcoin, we all know that maximum supply is 21 million. So what do you think about that? Around 14.8 compared to, you know, 21 million, that's a totally night and day difference right there. So not only is Quant far more rare than Bitcoin, 
But I think the use case is a lot better too. You know, Bitcoin, I get it. You know, a lot of fans, you know, a lot of people believe in it. And people, they oftentimes say that, oh yeah, you know, this person needs to hold Bitcoin. They like to say that. But personally for me, I don't hold any Bitcoin because why would I hold Bitcoin if there's something that's not only more rare, but more evolutionary, aka quant. Now, of course, not financial advice, but you take a look at Bitcoin, you know, market cap at this point is way too high. You know, I think that when it comes to quant potential upside, I believe is hypothetically far more greater at this point. Now, sure, when it comes to Bitcoin, some people like to say that, oh, yeah, it reached an all time high. Look at what quant did. Oh, my goodness. But here's the thing. When quant does finally decide to wake up and pump and once the altcoin season is in fully fifth gear, so to speak, I think it's just going to blow Bitcoin out of the water in terms of percentage increase. Not financial advice, but that's just personally the way I view it. And let's not forget, Quant is even partners with allegedly is supposed to be the world's largest data management company out there, which is called Oracle. I mean, we all know Oracle. So this right here is the amazing genius of Quant. Fantastic fundamentals, amazing use case, partnerships is A+, and also the supply is very rare. No brainer pick for me and $5,000 wouldn't surprise me whatsoever because if quant were to go to the price of five thousand dollars considering its current circulating supply at that point market cap would be around 60 billion dollars i mean come on man in the v chain section i mentioned how bnb at one point reached over 100 billion dollars of market cap you know in the icp section i mentioned how something like ethereum even reached over 550 billion dollars in market cap and also dogecoin at one point reached around you know over 80 billion dollars in market cap so a 60 billion dollar market cap approximately I don't think it's too much to ask for, for something this amazing. I mean, come on. And with that being said, what are bullish factors, in my opinion, which could very well allow for this to happen? And that's the fact that as of right now, according to Crypto.com research, there's over half a billion crypto owners, which is insane. You know, that's more than ever before in history, by the way. Back in the peak of the 2021 bull run, there was roughly only around 300 million crypto owners. So with that many less crypto owners back then, if the bull run already looked that impressive, this time around, could you imagine the potential FOMO buying pressure, buying volume. It's going to be insane. And I can't wait. Bitcoin also isn't even at the price of $100,000 yet. Imagine once it does that, let's say it even goes beyond 250000 Man, altcoin season is going to look ridiculous. So again, I can't wait. I'm staying patient though, because usually based off of history, altcoins, they typically peak anywhere between six to 18 months after a Bitcoin halving event. Now the Bitcoin halving event happened a couple months ago, back in April. So six months, October this year, 18 months, October next year. That's still plenty of time, which I don't mind, by the way, because if I have more time to accumulate, why is that bad at all? My strategy is very simple. Anytime earn income, I'm acquiring, I'm holding, and I'm just waiting. I'm dollar cost averaging. I'm not a day trader. I don't use leverage. I don't swing trade. That's just not my style. You know, I don't care what happens to the price in the next hour, two hours, two days. It's like, who cares about that, man? I'm focused on more so on the long term. And with that being said, I do believe that ICP, VET, and as well as Quant, they're ready to shock the world in such a fantastic way. I think they're sleeping giants. And when I take off those amazing factors that I mentioned, you know, I don't see why ICP won't hypothetically go to the price of $500. You know, I also don't see why VET won't go to the price of a dollar. Last but not least, I also don't see why Quant won't go to the price of $5,000. I think they're all that amazing. And I think that this bull run could be that spectacular. Can't wait. Very excited. And make sure to subscribe if you gain value from this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. It's going to lead the captain. I'm out. Peace. Bye.